All right, all right. Aloha, everybody. Thank you for showing up. This is session number four of uh, the Crypto Roots group session, Platinum group session on Zoom. So there's a lot of things going on. And none of this, when I, when I, when I express uh, my investments and things that I'm doing, and none of it's to brag. It's just to show you the opportunity that's available. So I got more free money, more free money than I expected. I got two airdrops within the last two or three days, which adds up to about over $1,000 of free money. Right. And I've already put that in places to make it more of it. So this game is very lucrative and uh, you really don't know where the money's coming from. And that's that's so that the people who are developing the dot, the dots don't they they want to fairly distribute it as equally as possible. So that's one of the reasons they don't exactly let you know when it's going to be released. But they're also looking for to attract a certain type of investor. You have that's the way they're going to build their brand is to give free money to people who did a certain type of thing, people who held a certain type of currency. The benefits to a multi-signature wallet say you want to literally I want to start a family account with my family. Hey, my family's new to crypto. Uh, yeah, yeah, we all have our own. You know, I recommend every single one, if you're doing business or you're doing family, everybody have their own personal wallet. Everyone write down the personal keys. And then if you actually want to do business and go into business with your family or your, your whatever, your business people, then you guys create a multi-signature wallet together, all right? Now, there's many different ways we can set one up, but I'm just letting you know that this concept is out there and you can take advantage of it. So you can say, go to your mom, dad, or whatever. Hey, we're going to set up a multi-sig together. And you can, what the, the thing about it is that you need multiple signatures to sign off, right? So... For example, if you have five people, you guys can create how many signatures it would take for the money to move. This is where you have to really figure it out because it's not just like, hey, we all, yeah, if it's five people, we need five signatures. But what if one person dies? What if one person's sick? All the, yeah. Those four people are stuck. They cannot access that hundred grand because you guys all required five people to sign off, right? And that was your family account. So now the money's useless, right? So-and-so died, so-and-so got hurt, you know? So now those four people can't move that money. Bad idea, right? Now, so a better idea would be maybe three out of five signatures need to sign in order for the money to be moved. So if something happens to two people, at least three people can move that hundred grand out of the wallet into someplace safer. They're able to access the money for medical bills or whatever, right? So you can have up to any amount of numbers. Same thing with a corporation. You can have up to 50, you can, uh, 100, right? like a board member. And then it would take, you guys decide that it takes 40 people out of 100 to sign off on the transaction before the money can move. All right, so you do with your family. So this is where you can actually con consult with each other, call each other up, have a meeting, you sit down and say, hey, do we approve this money leaving? And you call your mom, auntie, sister, cousin, whatever, and just be like, yeah, let's move the money. They all get to the computer, they all sign on the transaction and the money gets moved, right? So this is, and same thing with business. So you, go, you wanna be careful because you can easily be co coerced. What does that mean, coerced? That means if you say three out of five people need to sign off, well, what if those three, three people say, hey, you know what? Screw those other two people. Screw them, fuck it, we don't like them. Let's all three take the money ourselves. Then you're kind of screwed. Maybe you should have five on five signatures. You see the catch? Yeah. You see the catch? If you all yeah. had five, but one per once something happened to one person, then the money's stuck. But if you have three out of five, it seems more fair. But what if those three people say, you know, screw those other two people, we're gonna move the money now. So you kind of have to decide like, should I just deal with myself and my own private keys since I'm in full control or should I? So I, what I, that's why I suggest have your own personal wallet, right? Where you keep your money. And then maybe five people can put small amounts of money in a multi-signature account, right? Every month you guys fill $20 in. And you know, it is, I don't know but how to do this, but this is how all the decentralized, I mean, I know how to set one up, but what I'm saying is I'm not recommending you to do this, but all the major projects, MakerDAO, Yearn Finance, every single one of them has a multi-sig wallet, right? MakerDAO has up to nine signatures. I think Yearn Finance has up to seven signatures, right? And they require a certain, the governance can vote on how many people can and how many, so, but this is how all DeFi projects works because after a certain while, there's only a few people that can actually move the money in certain cases, right? So multi-sig wallets are something to consider with your family, friends, or business or whatever, right? Because here's the thing about crypto, a lot of people get it confused with traditional finance, 
right? A lot of people are like, yo, let's team up. Let's work together. Let's share money. Let's hold the account. No, if you don't own the private keys, if I own the private keys to your money, that's it. I'm taking your money. You can trust me all day, but that doesn't guarantee you anything. That I, It's not about trusting no more. You trust the software. You trust the code. It's called Trustware. Write that down. Trustware. Software you can trust. It's not about trusting people anymore. So a lot of people, yo, let's team up. Hey, can you manage my money? Can you, can you, no. If I, if you give me your private keys, I can, I, I can be the nicest guy in the world. But if I got private keys, it may be a wrap. I may think I'm a nice guy, but if I get a hold of somebody's private keys, I may want to peek into, peek, peek into their account, you know? So I don't, I don't, I'd, I'd rather just trust myself by saying, hey, no, keep your private keys to yourself because I don't want to feel tempted or liable or anything that, you know, your money's gone. Your money's gone. So this is what you tell new people. This is what you tell your mom, people who just aren't aware that if, first of all, if you don't own the private keys, you don't own the money, right? I know I'm re reiterating this, but you cannot reiterate this enough. You tell people, if you have to enter your password, if you have to enter your email or your phone number, you do not own the cryptocurrency. Facts, straight up. You, I don't care how emotional they get. Say that so one more you, time. If you have to enter your email, your password, or your phone number to access your cryptocurrency, you do not own your cryptocurrency, okay? I'm talking about Coinbase, Binance. If you have to enter your email, password, phone number, Google Authenticator, all that shit, you don't own it. The only thing you need to own are the private keys, those 12 words called a mnemonic seed phrase. If someone doesn't own them, then they don't own them. And the people are gonna be heartbroken, people are gonna be mad, people are gonna be upset, but they'll be more upset when their money gets lost and they can't move their money because they never owned it in the first place.